Okay, hello and welcome back to Zoink TV, I'm Andrew Weir and this is part of the Blender 2.64 Beginners Tutorial Series um, and it's technically part 5, although I've put it in between uh, the other modelling videos and the material video because this is kind of part 3 of the modelling and I, I said that I'm going to keep updating the modelling when I think of stuff to add that's really important so I've got a few more things just to show you and I'm hoping you've seen the other videos so you're a little bit more experienced with uh, modelling and edit mode and what we're going to firstly do is just work on this cube here and we're going to continue looking at a few different tricks with the subdivision surface uh, as well as a few things later in the video um, but we'll look at this first so add another subdivision surface to your shape and uh, as we've seen before it smooths off your shape and you've got a few set settings which you can change which we've all looked at uh, already and um, what I want to do from this point is just show you a little bit of uh, a few tricks and a few fixes that you can do to make different shapes out of this. And if we add a ring loop around the middle here, um, we get more of a cylinder shape, uh, which is a little bit use more useful than the other uh, shape that we had. And if we actually just slide this along, uh, it'll smooth the two parts, depending on how far around it is uh, and closest to the other. To the edge, it'll smooth it um, less or more depending on where you place it. So if we slid this down and then we pressed Alt right click to select our entire ring loop, which it should do, but it's only selecting the sides, so um, I'll just select the whole thing around once. Um, then we can drag this upwards and uh, we can see that it's smoothing it off a little bit too much, it doesn't look very even. Um, and we could just turn that up and get kind of a different shape there, but I'll keep it on the lower one. Uh, obviously, we have to render a little higher. I'll, uh, and what I'll do is I'll add another ring loop in the middle here, which fixes that shape to a more suitable shape for what I wanted. I'm kind of looking at a little bit of a bullet shape here, um, because you know you might not know how to model it. So we're making it really quick like that. And what we can do from this point say if we wanted to not do the sliding technique uh, by sliding this downwards uh, what we can do is if we grab this one back below and we grab the whole way around then we can drag that downwards obviously ruining the shape a little bit and then we can just press Y um, which completely rips the, the, the vertices and faces that you got selected it rips them off the original shape, which means that if I move this downwards now, we can see that I've just got a face on its own, which is what I had selected. Um, and when you do this, it means that there's nothing to smooth, uh, because there's no face there on the inside, there's no face. And that means that it's just smoothing this face and the end of this uh, kind of bullet shape, it's smoothing them separately. Um, which comes in handy, say if we, we change this into kind of a light bulb shape uh, we can scale this one up and um, and let's say we want it to be really sharp, although it's already quite sharp and a light bulb uh, if we did turn this up would be smoother but uh, let's say we want it to be sharper, what we can do is select the entire top uh, press Y again and that will completely stretch it outwards just smoothing the top and the bottom separately um, which gives you a lot sharper result, which you will want probably at some point. Um, what I used to do is I used to just add more ring loops and slide them down, uh, but that's obviously not very good. I kind of knew it wasn't very good, but this way just gets around that, so it's Y to separate. Um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to mention about just that modifier. I'm going to go to File New Scene. So. If we if we were to want to change layer with this, then what we can do uh, it's more of an object mode thing, but we press M, and uh, and we've got the, the cube selected, so M will allow us to move it to the second layer, and then if we want to see the second layer, we can press two on the num on the uh, number bar up at the top. Uh, I can't do that because I'm on a Mac, so I have to click down here, which is just the same thing, and there are all your layers. So I've got an orange dot there meaning that the cube is selected and if I uh, move to the other layer I've got 
nothing selected, but there are objects in this layer, and that's just what the black dot means. And it gives you an orange dot because if I'm here and I'm pressing A to select all, and A to diselect all, this other layer that I'm not selected on will keep selected that whole time. So if I if I add a modifier now, uh, such as a subdivision, we can move over here to the cube, and it's been subdivided because we've got it selected on a different layer. Um, and if you want to see all the layers, next to the Z button, there's that other button uh, with like the squiggly line. And I don't know exactly what it's called, but that'll show you all the layers. And press it again, and it'll only show you the layer that you're on. Uh, which can come in handy, and that's a little shortcut there. And, um, and next, I wanted to go into edit mode, so I'm going to actually just press the button to see all the layers. And, um, and I'm going to go into edit mode, this is where all, all the stuff's going to happen. And what we want to do is firstly look down here at the global. And all this is, is this axis of stuff that you can move. Um, if, you, if you want it, if you rotated the shape, you can still only move it on the x-axis, which is the, the global x-axis. But if we look up here, we've got a few different options here, but I'm only going to look at local. Uh, because if we turn it to local space and go back into object mode um, and rotate it now, back to normal, uh, which has kept its rotation because I was in edit mode and I rotated it, meaning that I can still move it on those axes uh, like that, but um, that's just uh, just because I and then I can rotate it here and it still move it on those like odd axes and then change it back to world or global and it'll go back to normal. So next I want to move over to the proportional editing, which is very important as well. So what I'm going to do is get this rotated back to its usual spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide um, just normally. So type in sub and get a normal subdivide. And if you look down here, there's a little menu appeared, which is quite important to look down at whenever you're doing things because it, it's specified to what you're doing, so it kind of helps out. Uh, and I'm going to change the number of cuts to as high as possible only for this tutorial so I wouldn't advise cutting a cube like this uh, just to show you the proportional editing now at the moment if we want a smooth roof on this cube modeling it can be a bit tricky so what we can do is just click here turn on the con uh, connected or enable connected being only stuff that's connected to what you've got selected and enable being anything inside that zone uh, which will appear when we start to move this so the zone is that circle and we can just scroll up and down to change the size of that circle so uh, that's how that's kind of used and what we can do is we can pull this upwards we have maybe a little bit more room there just to get a better shape and we can see we modeled quite a smooth roof onto this uh, cube, which if we used it a little bit smarter we'd get a nice result. Um, but there are a few different uh, selections of how it can be raised and their shapes pretty much are exactly what they do, but I'll give an example of one or two more. Uh, we can change to sharp and instead of like a rounded ball shape, when I pull this up now, that one's going to raise higher but it's still going to pull up the ones around it. So kind of like a, a spike. And, uh, and the next one, I'll go to this one. That pulls them up all evenly, but within that zone, so it you know, makes it a little bit easier. And then finally, random, which if you wanted more of a, uh, I guess just a bumpy surface, or if you did have a, uh, a massive area, this wouldn't be too bad for making hills although there's a modifier for that which will do a lot better but if you wanted like a rough surface the random one's probably best thing to do so, so that's how that works and and so I'll quickly turn that off for now uh, the next thing we're going to need to add another plane uh, 
that and then we can't see at the moment. We just need to drag that upwards. So, as soon as I find it, there it is, all the way down there. And, um, and once we've got this plane, if we were to try and move it like as close to this shape as possible, at the moment I can click this middle part here to move it wherever I want, and I can try and move it as close as possible. You know, I can look at the different views and move it down. But it's all quite slow, and although I've put it probably as close as I'd like it, it's not that easy to get that close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the magnetic like um, snap tool by clicking the magnet symbol right down there. Uh, we can change where it snaps to, so I'm going to snap it to the face. And now when I press G to move this around, and I hover it over my shape, it's going to snap, firstly, the vertices to the side there, as close to the shape as possible. So it's, it, it is exactly kind of in line with that shape. And I can just quickly move it back upwards, and there we go, I've got my distance, and you know I've moved it in. But as you saw, that wasn't too useful because it was moving from the vertices there, so I might want to change it to the median or the center. Uh, meaning that when I move this now, it's going to snap from the center onto the shape, meaning that we can get it in line quite easily, and uh, that will come in quite handy. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Again, I'm going to mention that you should look down here at the operator, because when I add things like um, a cylinder, we can see it appears there, and it's got mm, it's got quite a lot more edges around the side than I'd like. So if you, if you didn't know about down here in the thing here, it says add cylinder. And we can change all the settings uh, accurately down here. So I, maybe I want 12, uh, which is still rounded, but it's obviously got a less faces to it, so it's not quite as advanced. Uh, and I can change the radius and so on. Uh, most of these settings are pretty easy to understand. Uh, this, this here cap fill type, changes it from this solid fill uh, that might not be acceptable to, we can change it to a triangle fan, which means they all connect in the middle there. Uh, just things that make it a little bit easier to model and so on. A uh, very final thing that I'm going to mention is the cutting tool, which I don't think I've mentioned yet. If we just press K to get that, it'll snap to vertices and edges, or you can start in the middle of nowhere. Uh, although it won't necessarily give you the right result. Um, so we can snap it to the this vertice here, cut across to this vertice here, press enter, and, um, and now we've got a cut across the two sides there when I pull this upwards uh, with my magnet off. I pull this upwards, uh, wrong one selected. I just grab the, that one and that one. We can see that I've just cut it straight across. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, I think I've covered most of the stuff that I wanted to see. I'll probably add more, so subscribe if you want to see more modeling stuff. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.